are a lot of people who make a profession out of trying to oppose faith. They're a professional atheist. They do it for a living. And they think that they're doing us a good deed by trying to get us to stop believing. And they want us to become atheists too. And they think that that's going to make a better world. Yeah, take a look at the places where atheism has been in, in reigning and what a catastrophe they've been. The amount of murder and death far outstrips anything of religious life. No, no, no. Our task is not merely defensive. Our task is also to learn to evangelize to those who have lost faith or never had faith in God. To those who think that science is their religion and science, which is a great gift, is more important than believing in God and that science can explain everything. Oh yeah? Well, you ask science to explain why your mother still loved you when you were 15, despite the way you acted when you were 12, 13, 14. Go ahead, explain that by science. No, it's an act of faith that your mother has that eventually you'll have kids just like you were. That's her act of faith. And she trusts in that. And then when her prayers are answered, she, she can tell you about faith. But we go on to seek to evangelize. We don't let them try to dis dissolve faith and morals. Instead, we incorporate science, take the good things of our culture, but put them under the aegis of our faith in Christ. A faith that in our heart we accept and, pro and we profess from the depths of our heart and believe in our heart as a confirmation of our confession, that we are going to be faithful to it, and that our evangelizing will not only be in our words, but also by the resonance of the way we act, the way we love, the way we give of ourselves. That resonance of, shows the truth of the gospel. That is why, you know, when you look at the hatefulness of terrorists, why so many Muslims around the world, millions, I just read another article, oh, millions in Iran, where it's a death penalty, but they see the quality of the change Christ effects, and all people need to see that in us, because we live it as Andrew did. our petitions to the God who has rescued us from death and opened to us the hope of eternal life with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For the outpouring of the Spirit's gifts of wisdom and understanding upon our Holy Father in His guidance of the Church, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For widows and orphans, for the marginalized and the oppressed, and for unborn children, and their mothers. We pray to the Lord Amen. that the community in which we live may be able to reach out to young people who are hurt, depressed, or despairing. We pray to the Lord Amen. that those who have died in peace of Christ may rejoice in eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us also pray for the ecumenical patriarch of Constantinople, of the Greek Orthodox Church, Bartholomew, and also all those of the Eastern Orthodox communions whose feast today of St. Andrew, whom they celebrate as the founder of the See of Byzantium, that 
our, commu- our churches would form the oneness that Christ prayed for and that they would be filled with the grace of God and His love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, you are our Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear these and all of our needs through Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and for all His holy church. Grant us, Almighty God, that through these offerings which we bring on the feast day of Saint Andrew, we may please you by what we have brought, and be given life by what you have accepted through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels and thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Glory. 
most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all who hold, who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, you blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may defend it, and by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously, accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Please, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, 
so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Receti salutaribus moniti, et divin institutione formati, audemus dicere.
E ciam iste eci qui tole peccate mundi, beati qui acenum advocati sunt. Domine non sunt deus, urintres tecum me, se tantum verbo, no, non sunt deus. Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. Eternal Father, I offer up to thee my intellect, that it may learn to know thee alone. Sweetest Jesus, I offer up to thee my memory, that it may remember thee alone. Holy Spirit, Spirit of Charity, I offer up to thee my will, that thou mayest enkindle and warm it by thy divine love. Adorn my soul with thy seven gifts, and let me become thy pure temple. Fill me with thy grace, and prepare my heart to receive spiritually my God. Jesus, my God, as I am unable to receive thee sacramentally, do thou receive me into thy heart, and unite me so perfectly with it that nothing may ever be able to separate me, even for a moment, from thee. Engulf my misery and my nothingness in the abyss of thy mercy, that I, changed into thee, may henceforth live only for thee, by thee, and in thee. Come, therefore, thou my only satisfaction, come to take possession of this heart, which belongs to thee, and cannot live one moment without thee. Amen. Let's be. 
with the medical system is usurping the position of God in determining people's usefulness to society and subsequently determining the length of their lives. Don't leave yourself 
or your family members vulnerable. You won't want to miss this show, so please stay with us. 